C++ Reference Documentation So where can you go to get at C++ Reference Documentation? Well, there are several sources that you can go to. There's the official C++ Language Standard website, which is the primary source, but it can be a bit dry and boring to read. It is available at www.open-std.org. There are several secondary sources available as well, which tend to be more friendly and readable, such as en.cppreference.com, www.cplus.com, and msdn.microsoft.com. In this demonstration, we're going to talk about modern C++. Now, modern C++ is a term that refers to C++ as it exists today. C++ has been around for many years, so in the past, C++ didn't have all the features that it does now. And so modern C++ really just means using C++ techniques and syntax that are improvements that are available now that replace older style programming techniques and syntax of the past. Of course, a modern C++ compiler is going to be compatible with older C++ code, but if you're writing new C++ code today, you should probably try to use the modern features wherever possible. So let's take a look at Google search here and see if we can find any information on the topic of modern C++. Let's take a look at this first link. This is MSDN. And in the second paragraph, they say, in C++, you can do purely procedural C-style programming that involves raw pointers, arrays, null terminated characters, custom data structures. Now, these are all things that should be avoided because there are new ways of doing the same thing but in a better way. So for example, rather than using raw pointers, you'd probably prefer to use smart pointers. Instead of arrays, you'd probably want to use some of the collection classes like vector and so on within the STD library. So we're not going to go through all the details of what all these features are, but just be aware of the fact that modern C++ does involve some new ways of doing things. Here it says modern C++ emphasizes stack-based variables as opposed to heap-based variables or global scope variables. The auto keyword allows auto type inference within C++ instead of uh, having to explicitly specify the data types of everything. Smart pointers rather than raw pointers. The string type rather than char star and char array data types for text data. There's STL containers like vector, list, and map. These are collections that are an improvement on the old-fashioned fixed size array data type. There are STL algorithms. Use those rather than implementing your own by hand. Make use of exceptions. And then there's some advanced features that relate to inter-thread communication and synchronization and multi-threading. So there's a data type for that called atomic. Use lambda expressions. So a lambda expression is basically a way of implementing an inline anonymous function pointer type. Use range-based loops rather than the more traditional for type loop. And if you scroll through here, there's more to read. There's a, a list of uh, articles that you might want to take a look at. So for example, RAII, that's an aspect of modern C++ programming as well. That's something that stands for resource acquisition is initialization or RAII. Okay, so let's take a look at um, Stack Overflow. And we are, are going to do a little search here. We're going to put in modern C++ in that search block. And here's a question, what is modern C++? So there's many articles you could look at here, but take a look at some of the answers that they're talking about here. Using the standard library and exceptions and templates. Templates are generic types. There's RAII, which we saw just a moment ago. Standard library containers and algorithms, templates. We haven't really talked about metaprogramming, but exceptions. And there's a library called Boost, which is very popular. So you get different opinions from different people. There, some people are including some things and other people are including other things under the umbrella term of modern C++. But after you read enough of these articles and get a handle on it yourself, you'll have a, be in a better position to have your own opinion on what you mean by modern C++. Let's take a look at one more website. This is MSDN. And we're going to do a little search here on modern C++. 
And uh, okay, it looks like uh, that's the link that we were just looking at a moment ago. And this is probably pretty similar to what we were looking at on Stack Overflow. They talk about smart pointers, the algorithms, and the STD library, and so on. Uniform initialization, RAII, and that type of thing. But anyways, uh, so that brings us to the end of this demonstration. But basically, I just want you to be aware of the fact that modern C++ is the better way to go. That's considered best practice rather than the old-fashioned procedural style C++ programming. C++ Language Characteristics C++ is a statically typed language. Technically, this means that the compiler performs static binding rather than late binding when variables are declared. In C++, data types are statically determined by the compiler at compile time, rather than being left until runtime. A variable of a given data type must be defined as that data type before it is used in any expression, and that data type remains in effect for the lifetime of that variable. In this sense, C++ is not a dynamic language as is the case with some other languages, such as Python, Ruby, and JavaScript. By detecting type-related errors at compile time, rather than leaving it until runtime, an entire category of type-related bugs is effectively eliminated. C++ is compiled to native code that runs directly on the CPU hardware. There is no virtual machine or managed execution environment like the Java Virtual Machine for Java, or the Common Language Runtime for C Sharp or like a JavaScript engine provided by a web browser for JavaScript code. C++ is case sensitive in that any name or identifier that you define in your code is distinguishable based on the upper and lowercase spelling that you use. Unlike some other languages such as Python, C++ uses a freestyle syntax like Java, JavaScript, and C Sharp, where white space such as spaces, tabs, and character turns is used in an arbitrary manner for source code layout and formatting purposes. C++ allows direct memory manipulation via pointer data types, which enables your code to directly allocate, access, manipulate, and dispose of arbitrary data at addresses in an area of memory known as the heap. This is a mixed blessing because on the one hand it does allow for many clever and efficient programming techniques, but it also opens up a lot of opportunity to write code that accidentally corrupts memory in unintended ways that are often difficult to detect and debug. C++ supports procedural and object-oriented programming. Procedural programming has been around for more than half a century, and most languages support the ability to define reusable blocks of code that are referred to as procedures or reusable functions. However, C++ also supports the basic building blocks of object-oriented programming, where an application is made up of classes that can be instantiated as objects, that contain member data and member methods, that can interact with one another and inherit from one another. Object-oriented programming includes several concepts known as encapsulation, data hiding, inheritance, and polymorphism, which we will talk about in due course. Code Efficiency C++ directly compiles to native machine code using powerful compiler optimization strategies, allowing C++ to be very memory efficient and very fast in execution. Like C, C++ is very close to the metal and has a very efficient approach to accessing memory directly via pointers. Often, C++ code is as efficient and powerful as assembly language level programming but with a much greater boost in programmer productivity. This efficiency makes C++ an ideal language for developing applications that run on constrained hardware with limitations on available random access memory, clock speed, or power supply, such as robotic controllers, telemetry devices, Internet of Things devices, as well as rechargeable battery-based devices like laptops, tablets, and mobile phones. The ability for optimized C++ code to efficiently access and directly manipulate memory also makes it ideal for implementing some very high-performance algorithms on high-performance computing clusters, such as supercomputers and other specialized hardware, or in any situation where speed is of the utmost importance. Examples include solving mathematical and scientific problems, such as 
big data analysis, signal analysis, 3D graphic simulations, finite element analysis, fast Fourier transforms, automated low latency stock trading, cryptography, and multiplayer games. And of course C and C++ are often the only languages that are ever even considered in many areas of software development that involve systems programming, such as Linux kernel development, device driver programming, and low-level controller software development efforts. Performance versus type safety. C++ is not as safe as many other programming languages that are executed in a managed runtime environment such as Java or c -sharp or Python. These other languages are type-safe languages where compile time and runtime errors are automatically detected that prevent data types to be used in dangerous ways. There are many situations that can arise in C++ code where type errors may produce erroneous results. For example, C++ programmers can easily accidentally corrupt memory or result in code that attempts to refer to memory that is not properly initialized and so on. C++ puts a much greater onus on the programmer to be highly skilled and vigilant when writing code. C++ does not spoon-feed the programmer, but rather requires duty and responsibility from the programmer to write correct code. However, the upside of this is that the resulting code has much greater potential for fast and powerful functionality to do whatever it takes to get the job done with extreme efficiency and control. This is why systems programming, such as the Linux kernel and operating system device drivers for video cards and network cards, are virtually all written in C and or C++, rather than languages such as C-sharp, Python, or Java.